hearing me as well as you are seeing me today i am going to speak on approach to synoptic congenital heart disease with the reduced pulmonary blood flow in the next 30 40 minutes we'll be uh, discussing about specifically approach to synoptic congenital heart disease with the reduced pulmonary blood flow this topic is chosen because this kind of case will be kept commonly in the exam and a lot of examiners are interested passionate about asking the differential diagnosis of synoptic congenital heart disease with a reduced pulmonary blood flow so the fascination of pediatric cardiology is due to its complexity for an example tetralogy of hello let us say tetralogy of hello you have a ventricular septal defect and right ventricular outflow tract obstruction the vsc may be mal aligned or outflow extension or inflow extension or there may be additional vsc similarly rv vto may be valvular infundibular or combination and branch psc node is right aortic arch and coronary anomaly so at the end of the diagnosis you come with an answer that one case will not mimic the other and you will come to a clinical diagnosis of this is the particular scenario and you will be excited about the diagnosis so that's the reason each case will not mimic the other congenital heart disease that's why the fascination of pediatric cardiology is due to its complexity let us go to the esc with the ps physiology this is otherwise known as soft physiology so in tetralogy of hello physiology that doesn't mean all cases are co here but a synoptic congenital heart disease with admixture either at the atrial ventricular or great vessel level with obstruction to the pulmonary blood flow is known as psd ps physiology so essentially there is a ventricular septal defect there is right ventricular outflow tract obstruction so you have various varieties of uh, subtypes which i will be talking in next 2 minutes let us look at the classification of congenital heart disease so generally speaking the synoptic congenital heart diseases or uh, congenital heart diseases are asynoptic and synoptic in asynoptic there is an increased pulmonary blood flow or obstruction to the blood flow either systemic or pulmonary whereas in synoptic congenital heart disease they have reduced pulmonary blood flow mixed pulmonary blood flow and you have various examples in reduced pulmonary blood flow classical example is tetralogy of hello whereas in mixed pulmonary blood flow with increased pulmonary blood flow you have tfpvr concept and other things so that is a general classification i am going to deal with a synoptic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow today morning so if you look at the various congenital heart disease but you have to divide into hemodynamic subtypes the hemodynamic subtypes are asynoptic congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow either pre bracket patient or post bracket patient classical example of post bracket patient is ventricular septal defect similarly obstruction to the blood flow either pulmonary or systemic are synoptic congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow or synoptic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow so i hope you are seeing this slide a hemodynamic classification at a clinical correlation a synoptic congenital heart disease can be hemodynamically subclassified into synoptic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow synoptic with increased pulmonary blood flow and optimal pulmonary blood flow based on this you know that the presentation of the case whereas reduced pulmonary blood flow they have synoptic and synoptic spell increased pulmonary blood flow they will have uh, synoptic and heart failure whereas optimal pulmonary blood flow there may not be any significant symptom again based on the clinical scenario you have left ventricular dominance right ventricular dominance in all of these settings so i am going to discuss in detail how to identify all these conditions so general approach include you have seven steps of 
congenital heart disease. Uh, seven steps to diagnose congenital heart disease. The step one is evaluation of history and synopsis. Step two is how to identify the ventricular dominance, whether it is left ventricular, right ventricular, or biventricular dominance. Step three is identification of the great vessel relation, whether it is a normal D molecule or L molecule. Then you will be authoritating and finding out about the second heart sound nature, whether it is single, loud, or what is the second heart sound. Then murmur. After that is either depending on the clinical scenario, you choose chest X-ray or electrocardiogram, and of course eventually echocardiogram will give you the final diagnosis. It's an integral part of your clinical diagnosis. So let us see evaluation of synopsis. Always you should rule out breath holding spell. In my clinical practice, nearly 5% of the babies that they refer to us uh, to rule out congenital heart disease with a history of breath holding spell. I am sure that you all know that breath holding spell typically child will have an episode of synopsis, incessant crying and uprolling of eyeballs and all. Usually it is preceded by some kind of unhappiness in the family. Child wants something, parents they don't give, and the child typically uh, will uh, develop an episode of a breath holding spell. So, acrosinosis, that is peripheral sinusis, any neonate brought from village to tertiary hospital, then they develop peripheral sinusis because of the exposure to the atmosphere at a low temperature. And sometimes a critical uh, a heart failure patient because of the low cardiac output, they will have a little bit of peripheral sinusis that is because of the more amount of oxygen extraction from the peripheral circulation. So they will have reduced hemoglobin in the venous system. You all know that the oxygen extraction is 25 to 30. If it is more during a heart failure, then there will be duskiness and appearance. So let us see the acrosinosis. Generally, you can see here the lips and the tongue are straight, whereas the peripheries, uh, the soul and palms are blue here, whereas central sinosis typically lips, tongue, nail beds are involved. So in peripheral sinosis, this is a very, very transient sinosis, may last in 48 to 72 hours, and usually the peripheries are cold and capillary filling is somewhat delayed. Whereas in case of central sinosis, the peripheries are warm, capillary filling is normal, whereas sinosis increases when child cries because of the demand of more of oxygen due to increase in cardiac output. So I want to you people to understand, to write down some of these things. I am sure that if you send me email, I can send this entire PowerPoint to you. It's a teaching session. You all should know basic fundamentals of differences between cardiac and respiratory sinosis. So in cardiac sinosis, these babies are comfortable at rest, whereas respiratory, that is due to respiratory infection, lower respiratory infection, whatever it is, they, they always will have some kind of respiratory distress. What sense with crying is seen commonly in this cardiac because I already told you during crying that they act like an exercise there will be really increase of cardiac output, more amount of oxygen, so more amount of sinosis will be seen. Whereas in case of respiratory, the sinosis improves with the crying because case takes a deep respiration and more respiration, more oxygenation and sinosis disappears. Similarly, the resting CO2 levels will be lesser than 60, more than 100, whereas in cardiac, the CO2 levels will not be increased more than 100, even if you give 100% oxygen, whereas in case of respiratory, the CO2 levels will go more than 200%. So, you have pulse oximeter and examination of cardiovascular system will show the murmurs in case of cardiac. ECG X-ray will be abnormal, everything will be normal, except X-ray will show the pneumonia. So I am going to ask you whether you all should know what is hyperoxia test, what is the virginal hyperoxia test when you take arterial blood gas sample both before and after oxygenation. 
and now the modification of the hyperoxy attach using only pulse oximeter because practically it is not possible to give 100% oxygen intubation and take blood gas in all children. That's why now present day you take only pulse oximeter, pulse oximeter plethysmography and check the saturation whether it is increasing more than 10% or not. So I want you to know all this hyperoxy test before going for the examination or it is important during your clinical practice. So when you see sinusitis, sinusitis clinically you can appreciate when the saturation is lesser than 85%. So your eyes cannot detect sinusitis if the saturation is more than 85%. And the reduced hemoglobin should be more than 5 grams. So now imagine a child who has anemia of 6 grams and you are talking about the sinusitis. To have sinusitis, the reduced hemoglobin should be more than 5 grams. So practically in the presence of anemia, these patients are more symptomatic because of the low oxygenation and uh, uh, anemia which is oxygen carrying capacity is substantially low and clinically sinusitis may not be that appreciable in case of uh, anemia with sinotic congenital heart disease. So what are the conditions which produce mild sinusitis? I am talking about sinotic congenital heart disease, reduced pulmonary blood flow where you expect sinusitis but there are certain congenital heart diseases where you may not clinically really appreciate severe sinusitis, but if you carefully examine or if you make them to do exercise, you appreciate some sinusitis, corrected TJ, VST, PS, pink tetrazoa fellow, VST pulmonary atresia with adequate pulmonary blood flow where collateral sustain and you will appreciate a lot of continuous murmur. These are the cases, so they are sinotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow but the clinically detectable sinusitis is somewhat really less. So you will be able to diagnose based on the pulse oximeter. So VST, PS, physiology, these are all various clinical subtypes. The clinical subtypes are tetralgia fellow, double outlet right ventricle VST, PS, and the single ventricle with the PS, tricuspid atresia with the PS, DTJ with the PS, LTJ with the PS, and AV septal defect with the pulmonary stimulus. These are all various things that you, you can uh, uh, appreciate this kind of procedure. So let us take history, evaluation, step one. So in uh, sinotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow, you should take a careful history. So Professor David Distal from Mayo Clinic, he always used to tell, listen to what patients are saying because they are telling you the diagnosis. Mother may be telling that they, this baby is having a sinotic spell which if you don't listen then you will miss the diagnosis. So any history of gradual progression of the symptoms of sinosis and shortness of breath, slow onset sinosis. Mother notices some kind of duskiness at 3 months of age and at 1 year baby developed sinosis. After some time so child started the, developing this spatting, spatting episode then it is classically suggestive of sinotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow. So history of sinotic spell, history of sinotic spell equivalent or squatting usually suggests that this is a case of sinotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow. Similarly, shortness of breath or fitting, not able to play with the field group, these are all associated features because of less oxygenation in this kind of children. One more important history is hyperviscosity symptoms. A child who is having a sinusitis telling you that headache, dizziness or a history of venous thrombosis followed by diarrhea, dehydration or followed by summer episode or a history of CVA, brain acid, all these are suggestive of hyperviscosity symptoms. Traditional teaching, I am sure that you are all aware that failure to thrive a growth retardation failure to thrive is a feature of a left to right hand. But in sinotic congenital heart disease, reduced pulmonary blood flow, uniform growth retardation, both height as well as the weight reduction will be there because of the tissue hypoxemia uh, which produces the overall growth impairment. 
So these are all various types of these three by which you can tell that this is a synodic conjunctive or this is which are this pulmonary blood flow. So let us look at the technology of color here. In this VSC PS physiology, there is adequate mixing of both the deoxygenated and oxygenated blood, and there is obstruction to the pulmonary outflow tank. So in this condition, based on the obstruction, your pulmonary blood flow will be present and child will have that kind of symptoms. And generally speaking, these patients should not have any cardiac enlargement, there should not be any congestive heart failure. So late onset of cyanosis, history of cyanotic cells, history of spotting or spotting equivalent, no history of heart failure, no history of CVA, cerebral acid, suggestive of BSC, PSC, physiology. So squatting, when you see squatting, squatting is squatting on cyanotic cells or all mechanisms are described. I am sure you are all aware that one of the major mechanisms is a dynamic component of the infundibulum. So for some reason, this dynamic component of the infundibulum, infundibulum which causes the episodic abstraction due to various autonomic nervous system involvement, endogenous cardiac element, and also unknown mechanisms that causes the cyanotic cells and squatting. So classical example, wherever there is a dynamic component of the infant block, you will, the, you will see the manifestation of the cyanotic cells. Classical example is tetralogy of yellow, double outlet right ventricle, VSC, PS, which are normal related related results because in that situation, the infant block is seen. Similarly, tetralogy of tricuspid atresia, VSC, PS, the abstraction may be from the VSC, right ventricular outflow tract and pulmonary stenosis. Similarly, a variant of single ventricle. What are the variant? You guys to know what are the variants of single ventricle. So here I am talking a single ventricle with a normal related great result called as Holmes heart. So in Holmes heart, normal related great result, the bulboventricular chamber is nothing but right ventricle which has got infant block. These babies will be present with the cyanotic cells sometimes if you don't diagnose them very early in life. So let us see this history summary. A child who is presenting to you with a history of a heart failure, the yellow line, and then becoming asymptomatic, then becoming symptomatic, classically suggestive of a left to right shunt becoming uh, pulmonary, uh, developing pulmonary hypertension and becoming isolating syndrome. So symptomatic child becoming asymptomatic and again becoming symptomatic usually suggestive of isolating syndrome. There are a progressive gradual onset of symptoms of cyanosis and fatigue and other things usually suggest you of cyanotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow, whereas heart failure and cyanosis which is somewhat very rapidly and they will never get any kind of relief or asymptomatic state usually suggest you of cyanotic congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow. They develop very early pulmonary vascular resistance. Uh, pulmonary vascular obstructive disease. So, cyanotic congenital heart disease with optimal pulmonary blood flow generally asymptomatic for several years, mild dyspnea and exertion, mild cyanosis, and fatigue will be there. And usually, you diagnose them during a routine examination. <laughs> routine examination. And lay, uh, I, I want to ask you actually, what are the causes of late onset cyanosis, congenital or acquired? Any guys, late onset cyanosis. So you can see the late onset cyanosis causes acquired pulmonary AFP slurs. Acquired pulmonary AFP slurs are seen in, yeah, somebody is telling BSP, PS also. Acquired pulmonary AFP slurs are seen in case of liver diseases. So liver factors constantly go to lungs and which keeps the pulmonary AFP slurs to be closed. Suppose if there is a liver disease, these factors will not go to the liver, uh, lung, and then pulmonary AFP slurs will be opened and there will be cyanosis. Similarly, stretched foramina well with the right to left hand is seen classically in PPHM, right ventricular cardiomyopathy, examples like uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, right ventricular endocardial fibrosis, right atrial carcinoid tumors, and all will cause obstruction or increased LV, RV, EDP leading to right atrial pressures will be high and then there will be uh, shunting from the foramen oven. 
Similarly, all eigenmenger syndromes also you can classify into a late onset cyanosis due to congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease is a normal pulmonary blood flow. Uh, I want to ask you to type the answer. Generally, they are asymptomatic, occasional fatigue, and if you do cardiac catheterization, normal QP and QA. So, what are the causes? Cyanotic congenital heart disease with a normal pulmonary blood flow. So you can see this is one of the case of multiple pulmonary wave fistula. You can see the bubble contrast echocardiogram here. The bubble contrast echocardiogram is showing a appearance of the bubbles in the left atrium after filling of the right ventricle, probably pulmonary artery here. Uh, left atrium you can see through pulmonary vein and then to uh, left ventricle here, suggestive of multiple pulmonary wave fistula. Similarly, here you can see another case example, child presented with cyanosis, no murmur and we have to do a contrast bubble angiogram. Here you can see the uh, connection between pulmonary artery to the left atrium. So this is called as RPA to LA fistula. So these are one of, some of the causes for cyanosis with no significant structural heart disease and you detect only by careful meticulous evaluation. So another example which we published, you can see the superior vena cava directly draining to the left atrium. So anomalous systemic veins to left atrium. So these are all various causes for the cyanotic congenital heart disease which is no significant structural heart disease. Whereas going to cyanotic congenital heart disease with Eisenmenger syndrome, initially there will be heart failure with the history such as of left patient, then becoming asymptomatic. Then late onset of cyanosis with the dyspnea and exertion classically suggest of uh, developing Eisenmenger syndrome. So I would like to summarize here and then go to the step 2. So predominant cyanosis and related history, cyanosis, cyanotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow, cyanosis with heart failure, cyanotic congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow, congestive heart failure patient developing asymptomatic stage. Again developing symptoms in the form of fatigue and cyanosis usually suggestive of Eisenmenger syndrome and late on the symptoms and then asymptomatic stage usually suggestive of cyanotic congenital heart disease or any obstructive disease with optimal pulmonary blood flow. So second most important thing is reticular dominance. So if you look at the CT scan of the chest, a sagittal view here, you can see the sternum here and the right ventricle is just below the sternum. So in general, if you ever have to palpate your right ventricle, you won't be able to palpate because it is below the sternum. So that is what the right ventricle. So whenever there is a dilatation or significant hypertrophy and dilatation, then you will see the right ventricle which is going either protruding and there will be parathenal pulsations here on the second space or subdivided pulsations because of the enlargement below the subdivided region. So these are the two common things which you see whenever there is a right ventricular dominance, right ventricular hypertrophy. But in reality, cyanotic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow in conditions where a non-restrictive VST is present. Classical example is tetralogy fellow. Both ventricles are sharing with equal pressure. So you don't clinically appreciate that kind of right ventricular dominance. That means subdivided pulsations and parathenal view will not be seen if there is a communication between the two ventricles called as non-restrictive PSC. But conditions like a critical PS with the intact ventricular septum and the cyanosis because of the ASC where right ventricle is too much of tense up, there will be high pressure and there is no Every uh, ventricular septal defect, in those individuals you will see the subdivided pulsations and parathenal hue. So in tetralogy of halo, this right ventricular hue and the subdivided pulsations generally you don't appreciate. RV hue will be subtle, no parathenal pulsations, generally these patients all will have quite precardia. So classical examples of right ventricular dominance, but still you will be able to identify to certain extent whether it is the right ventricle or left ventricle because of the effect. If the effect is not formed by the left ventricle, that is inferior and lower most a, a classical localized apical impulse suggestion of left ventricle, if it is not there, 
probably you should be thinking it's the right ventricular attack. So conditions like tetralogy of yellow, almond retrition VSC, double object right ventricle VSC PS, detransposition VSC PS, you should be keeping in mind. So critical PS with AST causing a right to left shank and in those patients only you will see the right ventricular hypertrophy, parasynergy, subdivided right ventricular Q you will be seen. So going, this is a classical example, you can see the tetral FLO, non-restrictive BSC, right ventricular hypertrophy, a synodic congenital heart disease with the right ventricular dominance. And this is a rare scenario where you can see ventricular dysfunction. Generally speaking, synodic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow will not have cardiomegaly unless you have a biventricular dysfunction. This particular child is was having biventricular dysfunction because of the associated other abnormalities. I, I don't want to discuss those things. So let us look at the LV dominance. If you take the external plane here, we can see the left ventricular apex, which is lowermost and outermost where you can see the LV apex. So you will be able to palpate that the left ventricular localized apical impulse. There won't be any kind of parasternal cue. There won't be any kind of subdivided cue. So in case of LV dominance, LV effect, no epigastric pulsation, no parasternal cue. Classical conditions are tricuspid atresia VST PS, single ventricle with PS, pulmonary atresia with intact septum. Of course, the pulmonary atresia with intact septum is a neonatal condition. We should not be bringing such a diagnosis always when you are examining a child. But you should tell that this is a rare case which we can present during early infancy and neonatal period. So by and large, a synodic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow, LV dominant, you all should know tricuspid atresia with BST PS, single ventricle with PS. So, so let us see a couple of examples. So this is a tricuspid atresia. You can see right ventricle is too small, left ventricle is dominant here. So that's how you palpate and appreciate the localized pulse. Similarly, single ventricle you can see the only one ventricle which is giving both iota and pulmonary artery and when you palpate you will see localized area. So conditions like AVSC, ventricular dysfunction, AV wall regurgitation, this is a complex AVSC with the DORB and the common AV wall here. You may appreciate, you may think that both ventricle dilatation, both ventricular dominance is there. So you should keep in mind whenever there is AV wall regurgitation or ventricular dysfunction, usually it's a biventricular dysfunction, you may get a biventricular dominance in palpation. So cardiomegaly in decreasing pulmonary blood flow situation, usually due to biventricular dysfunction, valvular regurgitation or excess amount of collateral, lot of blood is going to lungs and coming back, so you will have both ventricles to dilatation and heart failure may be seen. So synoptic congenital heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow, step 3 is examination. So examination of ventricles is step 2, great vessel. So how do you identify a great vessel pulsation? So if you look at here, these patients are generally having a quite precardium. Rarely you may see a normal pulsation because of the pulmonary artery is small and iota is getting more amount of blood. So when you see normal related great vessels or when you think it, is, it may be normal related great vessels, you should keep in mind either it may be tetralogy of yellow, double outside right ventricle ESCPS or tricuspid atresia ESCPS with a normal related great vessel. But when you see pulsations there, here, here, lateral to the mid line on the left side. What are the conditions which produce the pulsations here? Usually whenever there is left and anterior iota. So left and anterior iota is nothing but L small posed great vessel. So when you have anterior left side placed iota here, then you will have pulsations, conditions like character TJ VSCPS, single ventricle with PS, where inverted, inverted chamber and double outlet right ventricle with BSD, extremely rare, L mal posed great vessel association. So commonly you should be telling tangential corrected TJ BSD PS, single ventricle PS with inverted vessel and rarely double outlet right ventricle BSD with L mal posed great vessel. When you see pulsations on the right side, this is commonly seen right and anterior iota. So right and anterior iota is nothing but a demal posed great vessel. 
So cyanotic congestion heart disease with reduced pulmonary blood flow with demorphosis great vessel situation, you should be thinking DTJ, VSTPS, DORV, VSTPS, single ventricle PS with demorphosis great vessel and rarely tricuspid atresia VST with DTJ and AV canal defect PS and demorphosis great vessel. These are the order. These are the chronological order. So, commonest is the DTJ VSTPS almost always associated with the majority of the time a uh, right hand anterior right hand, DOR with VSTPS, single ventricle PS with the demorphosis, tricuspid atresia with the DTJ PS and AV cannot detect PS with the So, you should remember that. You may get the opportunity occasionally to look for the pulsations on the right suprasternal region. Suppose you see right suprasternal region, you may consider that right atrial cord is producing those kind of pulsations like a catalogue arrow, pulmonary atresia, VST are the two conditions you should keep in mind. So, this is one of the case example of demorphosis gate vessel with the right atrial cord. You can see the uh, the athenic aorta is on the right side here. So, no wonder that it can produce the pulsations on the right parasternal. Similarly, you can see one more example here. The athenic aorta is extremely right here in a DTJ VST PS situation, and you can imagine that this athenic aorta, because this is the only bigger vessel, will produce the uh, pulsations on the uh, right and anterior. So, this is an angiographic still picture of LTJ, character TJ, where attending aorta is on left side here, you can see here left side, and this will produce the pulsations of the left side. So, from your point, you should be able to diagnose to certain extent. I won't say that 100% we are accurate in identifying this, but you should look for at least, you should look and make an attempt to, to diagnose whether greater the pulsations are there or not. Even if you don't see, you can tell the examiner by looking for the great vessel pulsations with the B or L, then uh, they appreciate that you have a common sense approach. So, correctly TJ VSTPS, single ventricle PS, and rarely URP VSTPS with L more for the great vessel. This is the right aortic cut which I have discussed. So, let us go to the fourth step called second heart sound. So, second heart sound normally appreciable second heart sound is very rare in VST PS physiology because the amount of blood goes across the right ventricular outflow tract usually which it determines the tissue component, pulmonary component. In a technology of fellow you have a synotic spell and the severe synosis your P2 may be totally absent. You don't appreciate the P2 even phonocardiographically. Whereas technology of fellow Pink tetral jackal, loud murmur, less cyanosis, you may appreciate a soft pulmonary component. So, tetral jackal, for an example, pulmonary component may be absent, may be soft, occasionally you may appreciate very rarely well where pink tetral jackal. Whereas, the demorphosis great vessel situation where iota is anterior, iota is anterior here, and iota is getting more amount of blood, pulmonary arteries are. I request you to keep in mind. So, next coming to the sound ejection click. Ejection click is a procedure.